When you set up your SEO right on your Elementor headers, well, you can get really good results with your site links. Things that look like this. You know those extra links showing extra pages underneath the search results? Those are the site links. But here's the thing. When we are not following the SEO best practices and even following some bad ones, well, we're not letting Google know exactly how to index our website. We're not telling Google that, hey, here is our menu. Here is how we want you to show our menu when people search for us. So inside this video, that's what I'm gonna show you. I'm going to break down how to best set up your Elementor navigations, your menus, and your headers to get the best SEO results. And I'm gonna show you how to prevent making some critical SEO errors. What's up everyone, I'm Jeffrey at Lightbox and if you geek out like I do on SEO and you love stuff like this, then let me know inside the comments. Also, don't forget that good YouTube stuff, like and subscribe. All right, let's go ahead and dive into Elementor and get started. Before I could even break down each one of these menus, it's very important to understand what does Google even look for when they're crawling a website trying to figure out what the navigations and menus are. This is all inside the HTML markup. So back here, let me show you what this markup looks like and what we want to achieve. First, our entire header should be wrapped inside this header tag. And it should look like this. Let me fix that up. So this header tag right here is gonna wrap around the entire header. Everything that we have above our content on the top of the page. That is gonna wrap around this top bar here. And then even for this more complex one that has two different sections, it has a top section here and this bottom section, we're going to want the header to wrap around the entire thing. Now, next up, what we're going to want is a nav tag. This is going to let Google know that, hey, this is where the navigation is. Our menu is right between these tags. Between the nav tag, we want to have a UL tag. This UL tag is going to wrap around our menu. This is telling Google, this is our menu right here. And then in between the UL tag, we want to have an LI tag. The LI tag is telling Google, this is our menu item. So each one of these, the service, the prices, our team, resources, each one of these elements, these are LIs right here. These are their own individual menu items. And then between that, we have the A tag, which is a link right here, and that's just the link that goes to the page. But what is really important is gonna be this header, this nav, this UL, and this LI. That is what we want to achieve. So let's take a look at menu number one. I'm gonna pull up the navigator. It'll make things a whole lot easier. All we have is one container wrapping everything, no inner containers. We have the image, which is our logo, and then we're using the WordPress menu widget. This is the same as a nav menu widget, same exact widget, Elementor just changed the names recently. Now this widget right here, the WordPress menu widget is by far the most SEO optimized widget we could use. In fact, it's the only one that I use for my menus. And because it has just done so well for SEO, let me show you. I'm gonna pull up my inspect element and show you what we have over here. Now, here is our menu. See, when I hover over it, we can see it getting blue. Now we have the nav tag that's wrapping around everything. We have the UL, we got the LI, and then followed by the rest of UIs. This is super clean. This is perfect HTML markup that is best for SEO. And that's the reason why I use this widget. Everything is just the way it needs to be. And what's best about this is there's not a bunch of divs and spans and there's not a bunch of other uh, tags and, and it's not messy. This is super, super clean. Now using this right off the gate, right off the gate right here is going to get you great results. There's only one thing that we need to do in this situation we need to get this header tag to wrap around it. So to do that, for this particular situation, because we only have one container right here wrapping around everything, I would go to this container, or if you're using the outer section, the whole section is out, will work as well. Go here, navigate down to additional options, 
We're going to see the HTML tag from here, select on header. Go ahead and update this. Let's take a look at the front end. I'll refresh that. And if we look at it now, we have, let's scroll up. You can see all those divs. It's not that many though. It's not as bad, but here we go. We got our header and that's what Google's looking for. They know, okay, this is our header. They go down here, they see our nav. They're like, hey, that is our menu right here. They see the UL and LI, and Google's like, that's the menu. Those are the main links inside the header. Those are gonna give you the best results when indexing your website and trying to get some really good site links. Next up, we have header number two. Now this one is very similar, but it's also got some differences. The main difference is there's a lot more elements happening here. We got more widgets, more things going on. First, if we look over at our navigator, we can see we got two main containers. We got this top bar right here. And you might want to use something like this for call outs, promotions, for, you know, to add socials, things like that. And then we got the other container down here that contains our menu. Now, we also have more elements inside this than our simple one in header number one. We got our image, but we also got our WordPress menu widget, which is the good one, the one we want to use. But then we also got a call to action button right over here. So let me show you what to do. There's two things we could do to optimize this right here. First off, this is already optimized right here, just for the fact that we are using the WordPress menu widget. But now we need to wrap this whole thing up inside the header, just like we did in one. Now in header number one, we put that down here in our container, but we're not gonna do that in this case because we have two containers here. So we want that wrapped around both containers. So in this situation, we will go down here to your settings, over here to your HTML tag, and then we're gonna navigate here to header. Now we have a tag wrapping around the entire thing. You might be wondering, how come we don't do that on header number one? Well, here's the reason why we don't do it on header number one. If we go back and we look at that HTML markup, let's use the inspect element. Well, you can see above the nav, well, we get these divs right over here and those divs start to add up. There's quite a bit of them. Now I want to reduce the number of divs between my header tag and my nav tag. I want to keep it as clean as possible. It's just for best practices and it's going to help to give the best results that we possibly can get. And that is the reason why if you're using just one container, put the header in the container. If you're using multiple containers or multiple sections, then put it on the page settings that wrap around the whole thing. But we're not done. We can still optimize this menu a bit more. So right here, we got the nav menu widget or the WordPress menu widget, and this is great. This is gonna show Google that all of these are part of our main menu. But this contact button, well, maybe you want the contact page to have a better chance being indexed inside those site links. In that case, maybe using a button for a link is not the best option, even if it's a call to action. There is an alternative option. Now first, take a look at this. All right, our WordPress menu widget, it's pulling this menu right here. If we go up to our back end, here is our menu and that is what's being generated inside the front end. Now, instead of using a button, say for like a contact us, but you do want that button inside your menu, what you could do is, let me go to view all, I'm going to add the contact here, and if I go to the top in the screen options, I could turn on CSS classes, and now over here inside my contact, I could put in a class, uh, let me see, I'm gonna call this menu, menu CTA call to action and now I could use just a little bit of CSS to style it up I could create my own button with a little bit of CSS now if you don't know CSS you're not comfortable with it maybe using a button widget would be a lot easier but you could also reach out to somebody inside one of our communities for Elementor and I'm sure somebody would be very happy to send you a code snippet including this guy just let me know inside the comments and we could hook you up but see doing this though you're keeping your menu all together you're going to have perfect structure you're reducing the amount of divs you're keeping it super clean 
These are going to be our best options, number one and number two. Now, let's look at menu number three. That is going to be our slide out menu with the pop up. Here is header number three, and you can see here all we have is one container, an image, and our button that is our slide out menu. If we look at it in the front end, you know, we got our menu right here. And it looks like it might be okay. I mean, I am using the WordPress nav menu widget right here, which is great for SEO, but there is one problem for this. It does not show inside the code. In fact, Google will never see this right here. They will never know this exists. To Google, this does not exist. All right, check it out. Let's go ahead and look at the code right here, the source code, the HTML. So we only see all of these divs, div, 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 A, span, I, but then there is nothing else. It does not show it. And the reason is everything inside your pop-up, whatever's in there, does not populate into the code until it's activated. Once it's activated, then it shows. But Google's not going to look at your website like that. So if you want to do a menu like what you see on awards and make it super dope and modern and clean, but only use a slide-out menu, your pages aren't going to get indexed. And Google's going to look at it. They're going to see like there's no there's no menu and whatever populates is going to be super random. You're not really going to give your website the best opportunity to be indexed the best that it can. Now, what about using this for mobile? Because I've seen a lot of people question that and saying using this for mobile is bad. But I'm going to debunk that because as long as your desktop menu is optimized like what we did on header one and header two, as long as you have that inside your desktop menu, when you shrink it down to mobile and you hide that and show your slide out menu, you're all good because Google's still going to see that source code. It's there. It's clean. It's done right. So I would reserve the slide out menu for mobile or for a website where SEO really doesn't matter. And you just want to have something that's more creative and not care about how Google is indexing it. Now, let's take a look at menu number four using a mega menu here is the new mega menu i mean and the mega menu builder and elementor is dope it makes it really easy to build some really cool websites i love mega menus it makes it uh it makes a ui and navigation more enjoyable more interesting you can get more creative but let's take a look at this from an seo perspective all right first off when we look at this we have menu items right here it's not pulling out the menu from WordPress that we set up in our dashboard like the WordPress menu widget. Instead, we are manually adding in our links and our titles right here. And let's take a look at what it's like in the front end. In the front end, let's open up our inspect element to see what's happening behind the scenes here. All right, so first off, when I open it, I can see the nav tag. That's good. The nav tag automatically comes wrapping around the entire element. But when I start to dig deeper, I find problems. I'm looking at problems right here. First, I'm seeing a bunch of divs with spans. All right. And spans are necessary for mega menus. But then we just see more divs, more divs, more divs. And I'm not seeing a UL or a LI. I'm not seeing anything that's going to indicate to Google that this is a menu. I'm not seeing proper HTML markup right here. And let's take a look at our mega menu, the actual drop down. Now for this mega menu, I wanted to get creative, so I added in some icon boxes. But icon boxes, they're not menus. They're, they're not built for menus. All right, so when I look at, let's, let's, uh, let's click on that to get to it. So when I look at it again, it's just a bunch of divs being nested. And this for me, this is just too many divs for me right here. For best practices, we always want to reduce the number of divs. We want to keep everything as clean as possible. It's the reason why we want to use the least amount of containers and try to build things in a very clean way. This is the reason why I teach best practices. And when I look at the source code inside the new mega menu, which the mega menu is dope. It makes it super easy to build and it is a feature I'm happy to see. But for SEO, this is not something I would use for a site that needs to be indexed correctly for Google. Now, if you do want a mega menu for your Elementor website, 
but you also need to make sure your website is SEO optimized. Like that is a very important factor for the website and the project. What I would do is I would have one custom built. If you know how to code it, code it out yourself. But if you can't code it, I would look at somewhere like Fiverr, Upwork, or even better, I would go to Elementor Experts. I would find somebody who could code it. And really, to build one of these out and to custom code it, it's not that big of a job. It could take maybe about five, six, eight hours. It's about a day's work. It's not going to break your pockets getting somebody to build it for you, but it is an investment just like SEO. It's an investment. So I hope all this makes a whole lot more sense. Definitely options number one and two that I've shown are gonna get you the best SEO results. Now, why is this so important and what can we expect to get by optimizing our menus and headers for SEO? Here I have site links to my site right here. Now, I just newly launched my site, so Google's still figuring it out. All right, and the way these site links work right here is, you thing is you can't control them. You can't really like do something said and Google automatically creates the site links the way you want them to do. Google kind of does their own thing. We can't control it, but what we can do is optimize it to try to get the best results. And they change, they vary. Like this is how it looks like on Chrome. This is what I'm getting on Brave. This is what I'm getting on Safari. And then on my iPad, I'm getting something a little bit different. But still, the right pages, good pages that I do want people to go to are being indexed underneath the site links. And through time, you can't learn how to optimize them, but it all starts from the beginning and understanding, which I hope this video accomplished. I hope this one helped out. And if you got questions about SEO, anything, Dealing with SEO when it comes to Elementor and WordPress, drop them inside the comments. And if you do love stuff like this, and again, if you like to geek out like I do on SEO and stuff like this, when it comes to WordPress and Elementor, let me know inside the comments because I, I, I would be thrilled to make more videos like this. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Also, don't forget to do that good YouTube stuff, like and subscribe. It is much appreciated, and I will see you again soon.